good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we are back with another My Damn Thoughts episode for you guys. And today, we are covering none other than AEW Unmatched Series number three or the Dark Order set. Or the Dark Order series is what a lot of people are probably going to call this set. And I totally agree with you, right? I mean, it's it's featuring all of the Dark Order. Not all, but you get what I'm saying. The full set is full of Dark Order members, which is amazing for us. We finally got Brody Lee. We got some cool characters in this set. And overall, I am pleased with the sets overall. But if you guys don't know how my damn thoughts works we take a particular aew or wwe elite wave and we basically break the full set down i kind of get into some details about the set i give you my thoughts across the entire board about the figures and it's kind of a deeper dive into the figures outside of our normal reviews that we do of each figure this set was also very different because when we covered the full set we did Brody lee by himself and then we dove into the rest of the dark order in one full video instead of you know two and two and two we only got five figures in the set this set was kind of all over the place so for my damn thoughts we are going to break it all down for you guys so how we typically start these videos is we start off with our first thoughts and we go all the way through and then we rate it and we rank the set from worst to best in my favorite figures in the set you know one through five or one through six so let's shut the hell up and dive into what we're going to talk about so getting into my first thoughts of the set I, my first thoughts were that i love the set i thought it was awesome that we got a full faction kind of represented in figure form in a full wave we've never really seen something like that so to see it like that is really really cool i like it a lot i love that they did that for us i wish that we would get this going forward. I think that you could get some people saving some money. Maybe a set comes out of some characters that you don't really care for. Like, if nobody cared about Dark Order at all, maybe they could skip this entire set and wait for the next set and they could save their money right there. That's another extra bonus maybe to, you know, doing full sets with different factions. I don't know what the deal is there. I don't know how well these are going to move at retail. You know, we'll have to see. But my first thoughts were that I loved it. And now that I've got them in hand, I still like the set a lot. We'll get into the rating, of course, but it's definitely not without its faults. We'll get into all those things like I said but at the end of the day I like this set let's start off with who I think is going to be the shelf warmer in this set and who I think will shelf warm is going to be John Silver you know it's not really his fault his character is what he is I think he's a talented guy I just think that his figure is going to be one of those that is I don't think it'll like I just don't think the the common guy is going to be walking by and see John Silver on the shelves and know exactly who he is you know nobody really in this set is just outstandingly known outside of being a wrestling fan I don't think I mean, they might. I may be wrong about that. But I think to the to a just normal person passing by, John Silver's not going to fall off the shelves. Thank your Frankie Kazarians. Thank your Pox from Series 3. Unfortunately, I think he will be that version. He will be the he will be that figure for this set. So I think Silver will be there. And I wouldn't be shocked if Grayson does too. But I think Grayson's got a little bit more going on. He's got a little face paint. He's got an extra head. He's got some wrist tape going on that's sculpted on. He's got the little overthrow. I think that John Silver will be the most shelf warmer of the entire set. If you want the flip side, who's going to be the hottest in the set? I mean, it'd be kind of ridiculous, but it's got to be Brody Lee. I think it'd be Brody Lee, even though a lot of people, I think Evil Uno will also move a lot of units, but I think at the end of the day, with Brody Lee passing away and, and everything surrounding his character and how damn good he was and him being the leader of the Dark Order and all these things, man, he will be the one that moves the most units, and it makes the most sense, and it's a damn good figure. It's very good. It looks like him. I think he will easily be moving, and he'll be the hottest figure in the set. As far as our chase variants go, you do have two different chases in this set. You, of course, have Mr. Brody Lee over here who has his Dark Order attire on. I know they're both Dark Order, but the other one is more Dark Order S. It's got the blacks. It's got the purples. Very sick looking figure. It is amazing. Hopefully, I can find it one day. And then our second chase is going to be none other than Anna J. And her figure is really sick, too. I like both of her figures, so I think that, you know, that, that, that'll be a really cool chase to s search after. If I found it, I wouldn't have any gripes. I think there's only, like, one or two chases that I really don't care to find. I'd still freak out if I found a chase. Don't get me wrong, but there are some out there that don't move the needle for me as much. But Anna J and Brody Lee's chase figures are very nice in my opinion. Now, getting into the best head sculpt in this entire set, I went with Brody Lee. I, I think Brody Lee's head is very nice. It may be better than the Elite 66. I think it captures that likeness of Mr. Brody Lee. I think it looks fantastic. I was really impressed with that. I think the hair color looks nice. The likeness is insane. The eyes look really good. And really, there's not really a, a figure in this set, maybe outside of the screaming Grayson head, that I really really am just in love with. So I think Brody Lee is by far and away the best head sculpt in the set. I, I love it. I think it looks like him. I think it's probably the best Luke Harper, Brody Lee, John Huber head sculpt we've ever seen. Now on the flip side of that, the worst head sculpt is going to be my man John Silver over here. I think that it favors him. It's just not the most likeness. It kind of has like a figures toy company vibe to me. Doesn't really capture all the details of it. I think that it could be a little bit better, but it's not a bad head sculpt. I think his screaming expression looks a little bit more like him, but at the same time, they're 
both a little bit off. It's like the eye shape. It just doesn't quite capture it. I don't think it's a horrible head sculpt, but it's not my favorite by any means. And I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's just, I think the rest are better in the set. I think overall, the rest of the figures in the set have better head sculpts than Silver over here. So unfortunately, he does have the worst head sculpt in my opinion. Now getting into our articulation standpoint, the best articulation in the set is going to go to Stu Grayson. Stu Grayson can literally do everything you want him to do, man. Like his ab crunch is insane. I, I want to get this little waist wrap off because I want to showcase this a little bit more here. Now you guys know that my arms had like a really bad deal going on, which we may get into in the video. Uh, they're very loose. They're ungodly loose, but this guy can pose around. It really uh, has a deep, deep ab crunch. Like look at that right there. Very insane ab crunch. He can uh, do a crazy split. Like look at that right there. I know a lot of them can do the splits, but at the end of the day, this guy has the best articulation. I think he could wrap himself in a ball almost. And uh, the only thing really declining him is his like little boot detail. But I think everybody has that stiff boot mold this this way for some reason. Maybe outside of silver over there. But I think at the end of the day, uh, Stu Grayson is a very fun figure. And if he didn't have these Lucy Goose arms over here, like you guys know what I'm talking about. Like, good Jesus. If he didn't have that, he would definitely be a better figure without that. But at the end of the day, he does have the best articulation. Now, the worst articulation, surprisingly, is going to be Evil Uno. Now, it came down to him and Anna J. But uh, you can't really bend him over a lot. And like, you can't bend him over without really popping off his upper torso. His arms also don't go all the way down by his sides. That bothers me really badly. He can't go, like, down farther than that. So his arms are stuck out wide like he's got a jacket on. His legs are a bit stiff as well. Like, even the thigh rotation right there. His knees are pretty stiff. And he has that basic boot thing going on, which I don't know why a lot of figures have that. But I think at the end of the day, he would be pretty difficult. It has, like, an Eric Rowan situation going on. You know what I'm saying? Where, like, if I tried to do some moves, he would probably be limited by, uh, you know, how close his arms can come together with this right here. So, that being said, I think he'd probably be the figure I'd least like to do a match with. Even though I like the figure aesthetically and everything, I think that Anna J slightly beats him out in articulation. And uh, for those reasons, Evil Uno has the worst articulation. And for our best accessory in the set, I went with Stu Grayson's interchangeable head. Just a really strong likeness, right? I mean, it looks just like him. The screaming expression is very nice. The papers almost won the duel there, but at the end of the day, I think a uh, extra head sculpt is a little bit better than the papers, even though I do love the rolled up papers that we got with Brody Lee. I just like this interchangeable head. Interchangeable heads are very nice. They make for great fix-ups, great expression. They look really good, and uh, that's the case here with Stu Grayson. Now, we're going to get into the number of figures that each person in this set has, and you'll be glad to know that everybody in this set is a first time in the line. We have never seen a figure from AEW or Jazzwares of any of these guys outside of the bonus chase figures of Anna J and Brody Lee. So, if you do not count those chase figures, these are the only ones that you can get. You know, there's not like a another series out there of these guys. So not counting the chase figures like we just mentioned, those are the only two. Everybody here is a first time in the line. That's hopefully a trend that we continue to see. I know in Unrivaled Series 9, we got a lot of first time in the line characters. In Unmatched Series 4, we have a ton of first time in the line characters. So we're finally starting to see, man, I called this in my predictions video that 2022 would be the year of the AEW figures where we get new characters. We're going to see a lot more characters come out this year and it should be very exciting and that's the case with Unmatched Series 3. Now if we're comparing these sets to Unmatched Series 1 and 2, I honestly don't know how to gauge it. I felt like Series 1 and 2 were solid in their own right, but I think Series 3 has something going on with it. You know, it's going to be known as that Dark Order set and it's got a lot of first things going on with it. First of all, it's a first time in the line across the board like we just talked about. It also is you know, a full faction wave. Like everybody in this wave is from the faction, the same faction. They come from the same home. So that is something that it will stand out for, but as far as waves like lining up against each other, I mean, I guess they could pretty much all three line up maybe. Series 1 of Unmatched was pretty solid, I thought. I enjoyed it. I love the Darby. I love the Kenny. I love the Britt Baker. I loved that they had a lot of, you know, heavy names in that one. And then in Unmatched Series 2, we got MJF. We got to see Wardlow Sting. You know, we got some recognizable names there, but they kind of balanced each other out with the Santana and the Ortiz. And then you have Tay Conti. And then coming into this way, kind of the same deal where they kind of balance each other out. So I say they're pretty comparable to those sets and at the end of the day I gave this set a rating of 7.5. I don't remember what I gave on Matt Series 2 or on Matt Series 1 if I even gave that one a rating but uh, I feel like those would probably come in around that area. Not a perfect wave. You had your heavy hitters but you also had some that kind of brought the level down. You didn't have a sixth figure to boost it or drop it so that kind of keeps it middle of the road. So I think like a 75% out of 100 is not a bad case at all for this wave. It doesn't blow me away but it's definitely not a bad wave so that's that's kind of where I was measuring in on that series number three. And now it is the time of the video where we rank the set before we get the hell out of here, man. And we're going to start off with number 
five. Again, we don't have a six figure, so we do have to do it based on a number five series. If you guys don't know how the criteria criteria of the ranking goes, basically excitement level for the figure, posability, accessories, how much does it look like the character, how much do I enjoy the figure overall, all these different things come into play. They mix together in a freaking bag to give me what my ranking is. So let's go ahead and get into our ranking of AEW and Match Series number three. And let's start off with number five. And number five is going to be none other than John Silver. At the end of the day, he just doesn't move the needle a ton for me. He's not my favorite figure in the set. Not a terrible figure. Again, not the best likeness in the head sculpt. I don't think it's the most exciting figure, you know. His arms look a little bit long to me also. The head sculpt isn't the best. And I just don't think it, like, I actually like to pose him around. He's actually pretty fun to pose around. And just because a figure comes in at the bottom doesn't mean it's a bad figure. I just like other figures in the set a little bit more. And I think if I were to pick which figure I would least want out of the full wave, I think this would be the one. So that's just kind of where I came. So there is John Silver at number five. Coming in at number four, we have Stu Grayson. Stu Grayson, same boat really as John Silver. Not the most exciting, but he can articulate well. I like what he's got going on here with the, with the piece right here. I am going to try and glue that in place. You guys know that I did have like the super loosey-goosey arm problem right here that I have to fix. Like, look at that right there. Speaks for itself. But I do like his interchangeable heads. I like the way he can move around, and I think once we fix him up, he will be a really fun figure to pose around and stuff. So, he came in at number four. Not the most exciting, but he does have a lot more bells and whistles than Silver. He's got the armband. He's got the wrist tape. He's got the little jungular here. He's got the face paint. He's got the screaming head. So, Stu Grayson was a little bit better. Number three is gonna be Anna J. I like the Anna J figure a lot. I like her as a talent. I thought the interchangeable heads were solid. Not my favorite heads, but I do like the gear. I like how she poses around. I like that we're expanding the women's roster. And at the end of the day, I just like the Anna J a little more. I think I'd rather have the Anna J over the John Silver or the Stu Grayson. That's kind of where it came for me. Uh, she can't articulate the most, you know, but I think that overall, I do like the women's figure. And, you know, at the end of the day, once I get all my information about the figures in the wave that we are receiving, I break all those things down that were, you know, that we talked about with the accessories and all those things. And then I say, would I want this figure more than the others? And that's where Anna J lands for me. Number two is going to be Evil Uno, and Evil Uno is a really fun figure. I know he has the worst articulation of the set, but he has a lot of details going on. I like his wrist tape. I love his mask, the way that it feels. It's not just one flat material. It's got a lot of texture going on to it. I like the way he looks. I think he looks pretty menacing. He's a guy I would love to see in the pick fed and stuff like that, so Evil Uno is one of those guys that uh, is just a cool figure, man. Even though he can't move the best, he is a really cool figure. And number one is going to be Brody Lee. I mean, I don't know what you expected clicking on this video. You probably already knew that he'd be number one. He's a damn good figure. Uh, probably the most quality figure they've released to this point, maybe outside of maybe the top three or four figures in my all-time top 10 AEW figures. So this Brody Lee is easily a contender for figure of the year early in 2022. He's going to be amongst the top 10 once we get there at the end of the year. No doubt about that whatsoever. It's a fantastic figure, fantastic head, great accessories, feels good in the hand, looks just like him. It's undisputed. It may be the best unmatched figure they've made to this date outside of maybe unmatched series Kenny Omega, maybe even Darby Allin. It's right up there. It's definitely the best figure in the set. I have zero issues with it whatsoever. Ever. It even, like, even the structure of the figure is good. Like, the elbows are tight, the joints are nice, it doesn't get on my nerves. My only critique would be maybe a little bit more ankle movement would be nice to see, but I love this figure. I think it's damn good, and anybody who owns it is gonna love it as well. So, we have Brody Lee at number one, we have Evil Uno at number two, we have Anna J at number three, we have Grayson at number four, and at the bottom, we do have Silver. So, that wraps up our Dork Order set or AEW on that series three, man. I would love to know your ranking down in the comment section below. Do you guys love this wave? Hate this wave? Do you own this wave? Let me know down in the comment section below. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts on this wave down below and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Don't cross the line like this right here. This bullshit right here. Look at this. That right there. That is just abysmal, bro. Woo-wee.